Radio City Council meeting order. The invocation by Pastor James Jones. Okay, we're thankful tonight for the country in which we live, the state, and this city in which we live. We're thankful that we get to elect representatives to make laws for us and then to enforce those laws. And God, we pray tonight for those who have that job. Pray you give them wisdom and insight into what our town needs and apply that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. This month's Volunteer of the Month Award goes to Julie Soliday. This is her third season as director for the Christian County Youth Volleyball. <coughs> when it first started, there were 27 youths involved. There's been 357 youths enrolled since the first day. The first year, the youths were second grade to seventh grade. Now it is pre-K to seventh grade. Julie oversees four adult coaches, five, group, five high school girl coaches, and eight junior high girl coaches. They've played their games in five different gyms already, Vision Way, Calvary, East and West gyms at the high school, and Stonington. The registration is $40 per person, and in order to help keep costs down, they hold various fundraisers. They also receive great community support. By receiving this support, they offer waivers and scholarships so no child is left out due to financial issues. Julie also started a youth sports fair, and this has been their second year for them. Ladies and gentlemen and aldermen, Ms. Julie Soliday, as she come forward, please. Title 3 of the Tenneville City Code. In 
disposing of municipal cannabis retailers occupation tax. I need a motion to move motion Alderman Bud. Second. Second. Second Alderman Bryant. And uh, comments or questions, Alderman Bud? Just so that everybody knows, this has to be done in order if the city were to sell cannabis in the city. To allow the sale. To allow the sale of it. This has to be in by September 20th so that we can impose a 3% sales tax on that starting January 1st. This does not mean that we're selling it in the city, but if we were to take that on, this allows us to put that tax on there. As a follow-up, you need to be thinking about soon, if you're going to allow it, to put some zoning code provisions into effect. And there's some proposed ordinances by the Illinois Municipal League suggest that you do that if, in fact, you're going to allow that sale. <coughs> and that might be a suggestion for the next ordinance committee, but I'd like to wait until we, most of us go to the municipal aid conference. I would think there would be a topic on that. Sessions, sure. There would be many sessions available for that and see yeah. what it really entails. So. In the email I gave to all of you, you have what IML, uh, all of us really just put out thus far on what the program's all about and the proposed ordinances. So as the mayor indicates, I think the league will probably have some more follow any other questions or discussion roll call Bernie yes Leila Zotti yes Jim Holland yes Crystal Teddy yes Megan Bryant yes Larry Bud yes Sean Bruno motion carries six to zero motion to bid and or ad advertise a full dot full-time dispatcher in the police department the uh, police chief asked me this morning if I would uh, not rely on pending the results of the current dispatcher test results for vacancy in the police officer position, even though the top candidate for the new police officer is a dispatcher now. If he does not, will become a police officer. Uh, chief uh, Wheeler would like to have a fifth dispatcher. We had that in the past. We've discussed it. Uh, if there, I guess it's 101. 68 hours in a week and the four dispatchers 40 hours a week and you know, we don't have enough but there would be they double up the dispatchers on the days and times on the weekends and have to do the proper paperwork so in a way the chief leader might speak to this uh, if the dispatcher the current dispatcher does not come a police officer you would still like to hire another dispatcher yes sir i spoke to the doctor today he did pass the cycle he did pass it okay sir so that, that point is mute then that we will uh, we need a closer to higher number of dispatchers without current dispatchers we need to go to second most of all in the bud, second of all in the skull tendy. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Leland Buddy. Yes. Jim Holland. Yes. Crystal Teddy. Yes. Megan Bryant. Yes. Larry Bud. Yes. John Bertle. Yes. Ray yes. <coughs> Motion carries seven to zero. Motion to approve the annual duck blind and deer drawing to be held at Lake Department Shop on Wednesday, September 4th, 2019 at 6 p.m. Moved. Motion of Alderman Dorchenes, second of Alderman Gurgle. Questions or comments? Roll call. Jim Mullins. Yes. Crystal Teddy. Yes. Megan Bryant. Yes. Larry Bud. Yes. Sean Bertle. Yes. Dorchenes. Yes. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Discussion of First National Bank of Taylorville sidewalk project and any motion relating there too. Uh, we had this on the council meeting a couple weeks ago. Uh, the discussion is uh, the proposal that was turned into us was supposed to uh, include all of the sidewalks and now there seems to be a discrepancy. Either it's over uh, prevailing wage or, or what the issue and so I invited the bank and their contractor to come tonight and uh, to discuss this issue. So I'll uh, turn it over to City Attorney Romano right now to uh, say the issue that he brought up. And he had some preliminary talks with the uh, contractor. Yeah, let me share with uh, Steve and I have had a couple of conversations on this issue. I think at the council meeting, the one before last, when uh, this proposal was presented to you, you folks, uh, agreed to provide $8,000 towards the materials. So 
doing those entire sidewalks. At that meeting, as I recall, I think it was uh, openly stated that they, the committee wages was going to have to be paid for that project since it is a public sidewalk and public funds will be used in part, i.e. payment of materials. And then we talked about a certificate of insurance that would be required by your uh, existing city code that requires anyone who does any work on public sidewalks or public ways has to furnish a certificate of insurance naming the city as an additional insurer. Uh, it's my understanding that permit was applied for, the certificate was uh, prepared, and then I, for whatever reason, I got a couple phone calls from Steve questioning whether or not why preventing wages had to be paid. And I, I think I, whether he was prepared or not, I think we, I made it clear to him that because it is a city project, we are paying for materials, as I understand the law, prevailing wage is absolutely required. There's no waiver about that. And that's been the subject of a, of a lot of conversations on municipal league conferences every year we go up there. And it is a uh, uh, always a hot topic. There's been some discussion of trying to uh, make it only applicable to projects over a certain dollar amount, but to date that legislation has never come about. So uh, I think Steve accepted what I was telling him as to what the uh, rules were. But then I understood of a follow-up conversation that he represented to me that the two contractors that are working under him for the project did not bid it to him for uh, payment of uh, prevailing wages, which of course is not the city's uh, issue. It is an issue between he and the bank, whatever that contract is, or we're not a party to that. But then the next uh, information I got from Mr. Millen was that he had put a stop for order on the, the sidewalk that had not been torn up. So we've all been by there. You know the sidewalk along West Main Cross has been torn up. Half of Webster Street's been uh, removed. But I, uh, so that brings it back to you folks is to, the understanding was, the agreement was that the 8,000 would be paid to do the entire sidewalk. But, and I don't know, the last meeting, the bank was gonna take it to their board of directors and find out what it was they were going to do. I don't know what that response is, quite frankly, as I sit here. But the question for you folks is, are you gonna pull the $8,000 if they don't do the whole sidewalk, or if you only do half, what's your, what's your position? Because it's not what you agreed to, it's not what was presented, and the issue of prevailing wages is not uh, something that was not was secretive, everyone knew about it. And uh, so coming back now, hindsight, they don't want to do it. That's that's your call. That's a good decision for you folks. So that's why I saw the agenda. We had it there last uh, council meeting, but we didn't take action on it because of the word the mayor got from the president of the bank was they were going to she had to take it to the board of directors, and I don't know where they're at with that. So that's where it is, folks. There's no question in my mind for many ways this has to be paid. And the uh, the city code book does require if you look at the sidewalk. Uh, on uh, Marcus Street, up from their drive up to the, up to Webster Street, uh, there are some damages done to that sidewalk. Now, whether it existed beforehand, I can't tell you that, or, or if it was done accidentally during the uh, excavating. But uh, by city code, that has to be repaired uh, by the contractor, and it does require prevailing wage payments on that. So either way, uh, that that's, those repairs have to be made. So. The, the original proposal stated that uh, remove and replace concrete curbs and sidewalks, main cross, east of the drive through all of Webster Street, and Market Street, east of the drive through is what the, the initial proposal was that, that we agreed to pay. And I believe the figure might have been 9000 I, I, I whatever that figure was. Whatever. whatever the concrete cost, we agreed to do that. So what, what I'm asking now, if they do not finish the project or do half, or do half of it, I did go and look at the sidewalk, and it seems like to me, I'm okay with the current sidewalk from the southern part of Webster Street, which runs from the old alleyway towards the south to Market Street. But in my opinion, Market Street sidewalk needs to be replaced as long as, and East Main's already been torn up, and, and I think they'll agree to, to go ahead and replace that, but that, and I know, I don't know if any of those all have really looked at it. The sidewalk, the southern part of, of Webster Street, 
seems to be in very good. And I would I would say that we could go by without doing that. But I do think that if we're, if we're gonna pay the nine thousand or eight thousand, whatever dollar amount that is, that we do need to get the market street sidewalk replaced and that was in the uh, original proposal. When you say sidewalk, you're talking about the curb. And sidewalk, the curb, and, yeah. Concrete curbs and sidewalk is what the original proposal well, said. What's the proposal from the bank? What's the, what's your position on? That's what we I talked to uh, Mayor Barry, Barry about the other day about if we can leave the last the south side of Webster Street and we are willing to do the market street. Right. Okay. So. so that little retaining wall is back behind the curb or behind the sidewalk is that coming out? Kind of in that know. in that section of Webster Street? Yeah. No, that's it. Because it's kind of an oddball thing sticking up there. But that's going to actually hold the grade back on the side. See, that entire area would be curved in. I'm talking about a market. The section of market that has not been torn out yet. You're talking about Webster Street or Market Street? Because Market oh, Street. Street. I'm sorry, Webster Street. Webster Street. That curb that's on the bank side of the sidewalk will stay. Is there a reason for that? It's holding back the grade and the sod in that area. Well, the sidewalk would be that too. The grades, right? Well, everything's been graded out by the engineers and so forth. There's a there's a curve on the south side of the East West Drive that runs through the old alleyway. There's curving there, and that's all that's all been shot by engineers long ago. I mean, the grades have already been established. I don't have a problem. And that was even okay with your city and they did all. So now we're going to have half and half though, right? No, we're they're going to do it all except for that half a block on Webster Street, which if you do go north, the curve is a little bit, it's higher in one spot than the other, but that, 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 no, the sidewalk itself had been replaced a few years ago, I don't know when, but the sidewalk itself still looks good to me. And, but uh, you know, the only thing, so I'm okay with it. Again, we'll, we'll, it'll cost us less money because I don't think they'll use as much concrete now because they're not tearing that up. But as long as they replace Market Street from Webster to the drive up, and we looked at that the other day, Jim and mm -hmm. I, and they already got everything tore up from on West Main or you know, West Main. So uh, this this kind of goes back to the original whole issue with this and. Alderman Myrtle, you made it a point to say we're going to have this beautiful space here and then we're going to have a diamond and a goat's butt for concretes and curves. Okay, I don't know how this is any different that now we're going to have patches of old, like in my mind I guess I imagine these beautiful new concrete, you know, around half or whatever and curves and then and then a big patch of old stuff that's kind of been, like I don't think that's any different than what it was originally. It's, it, it's gonna look like it's gonna look like crap if it's yeah I've been there a couple of times actually. Well, the, the piece of curve that they're talking about from the old alley where they're talking on, on Webster Street, that curving and sidewalk has been replaced in the last I don't know I'm guessing ten years, so it's in better shape than almost any sidewalk in the city of Tampa. So it's in good shape. But this what I was talking about before, I'd like to see it replaced all the way around. But it doesn't sound like I'm gonna get my way. Well, so what I but so I don't want to forget. I don't want to not get Market Street replaced just because I'm holding out for half a block on Webster. <coughs> Nothing personal, but this that's what they're wrong. I think it should be all replaced. That's we, what we, the agreement. We can't is. make them do it. I understand that. I understand that. But I do think there's a lesson to be learned here, and I don't know who gets to teach the lesson to whom. But somebody needs to tell contractors, engineers people that are going to do something next to city property that if they do any kind of work on city property it's prevailing way it seems like this ball gets dropped a lot I'm not sure why I mean contractor I mean, may, I, nothing, may I speak yeah nothing because I'm, I'm not here I'm not here tonight to, to question the prevailing wage we've had that conversation but prevailing wage was not discussed in committee that night the motion was was made out of committee and seconded and approved for nothing for the city to pay the material the bank was going to pay the labor but nothing at that point in time was mentioned about prevailing wage not until your city attorney added it to the motion the night of the meeting well, so 
I'm, and, I, and I didn't say anything that night because I thought, okay, I'm going to go back to Castle Tullis and find out what they did. I'm not making the assumption. Yeah, I'm just is, saying how how it happened. The it, assumption it, was that the bank is paying the 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 money for the labor, so it's not taxpayer money, and that's where we had this conversation. So I'm not here tonight to dispute that. But my relationship with my customer then was to go back. Okay, the money we were going to spend. You want to spend that much more now in prevailing wage, or is there a way to work with the city and only do por a, a portion of it? My point is, I don't want you to get mad. They don't take this personal. I'm just saying that as a contractor, you should have known that city property is prevailing wage. It's the state law and it's the city code. I so, understand. In your we contract. Could, but we could also dispute here tonight. Even your subcontractor. All that all that every that. city sidewalk and every city approach. It well, has been paid by prevailing so wage, and I don't think so. It has been since I've been there. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. So if we... That's well, three years. Well, that's right. I mean... And, 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 well, so, so that was a cycle. Right, around but we're well, not we're here just, tonight to dispute that. Really, we're just here tonight to find out what do we do. Yeah. What do we do? So what happens if we just decide no? Like, you know, that was the agreement all we, that we... All we can decide is we will not pay them the money that we... Right. Originally so what, what happens then if we don't? It's up to them what they want to do. But then don't they have to put it back and pay for the concrete and pay for failing wages? Yes. yes. We'd have to put back Main Cross and half of Webster and the 28 feet that's damaged that we damaged on Market Street. Okay. And, pay and that was only sidewalk. There's only, there's only about half of Market Street is curved right now, about 20 feet down at the corner of Webster Street and about 30 feet toward the drive up. In the middle of that is all old approaches to old businesses, so there's no curb there. Mm -hmm. So the, the bank would not have to put that curbing in. The only thing we would have to do is replace the 28 feet where we opened up two 12-foot gates and had heavy traffic go through. The only thing we'd have to replace. So the only thing that would happen, I'd have to go back and send that motion. Right. So I'm not in favor of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what we need to do is... Gentlemen, on the market, before you go down to the handicapped ramp there, are you are you going to make a soft cut to take that curb? I mean, that side. Where, I'm sorry. Where are you at now? You know, right on west. There's a handicapped ramp right in there. Access ramp. What portion of west? It's right there on uh, Market, right at the corner. The corner. Of the yeah. There's a handicap ramp there. So if you're going to tear that out, are you going to re to redo that handicap ramp there? If, if, if we tore that section out, yes, if we don't. But what we're proposing is that portion there down Webster Street and around the corner that's all been replaced. But that was already done a few years back. Mm -hmm. that's what we're so that'd be a portion that we, we wouldn't cut out. We were actually cut out. All of them all of I, I had just a question for Steve. Is there going to be another approach off of uh, Market Street going into the property? Is there going to somebody know it's going to be another? Going to be a garage or something. No. The garage, the entrance to the garage is off the <clears throat> drive through area. Okay, I was told there was going to be another one. Okay. No. So, in other words, we don't need any motion. We just need to leave it the way it was settled before. Except, I think, are we okay with leaving the southern half of Webster Street as it is? I'd rather have it replaced. I don't think we need a motion. So the only part that you're on motion. I got one more question. The only part that you're going to replace on Market Street is where you have to go. No. 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 no, no we're, we're, what they're talking about, if I can interrupt, please, is that that which you go out there and you see the sidewalk is removed, that's going to be put back curbs and gutters. Then all the Market Street from their drive up to the corner is going to be removed and replaced mm -hmm. curbs and gutters. But not, like, but not including the corner. Right. No. We're, we're, we That's look, what they're saying. So, and so then from that corner going up to the old alleyway on Webster Street, up to the point where it hasn't been torn out, that's going to stay in yeah. unless they damage it. Right. 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 And, 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 and. So I think what the, it, the census is, what I'm hearing here, is that if they go forward, if they do that, then you will pay the material cost for that material, for that curb and gutter. Right. And they're going to pay the labor. And as Stevie know that when you just need to be sure that uh, your subs turn in the certified payroll because I'm telling you, it's not our rules. No, it's, it's the state rules. And, and I'm telling you, they'll come
and downloads they had on their screen. And they'll want to see where are these things. And, and uh, we had that discussion with <coughs> all the entities. So we got to make sure that your I, that I's are dotted, that these are crossed. But we don't know at this point where the bank stands either, right? Like the bank will come back and say, oh, we're going to go ahead and pay and have all of them done. No. No, the bank I, has agreed to yeah. do everything except the half. Of okay, right, okay, that's right. Does that agree with the bank? That's better. Right. Okay. That's easier to fix it. And I guess legally, I mean, we agreed to $9,000 and it's short by a half block. I'm assuming that. You're not going to pay it. Okay, I'm looking at Here's the motion in here. Oh, that's the tape. You're not agreeing to a specific dollar. Right. It's just whatever the material cost right. for the concrete for the curb. You got it. And you're in contract with Pogan Pole. We did put the curb in on Main Cross this morning. That ticket to Pogan Pole is on hold as far as whether you're going to get in charge of Castle or it's going to the city. Right. Whatever you decide tonight, we tell Pogan Pole tomorrow morning, and then all those tickets will literally go to that entity. What was the number that you told the council that the material cost would be? Was it eight? Or might I get my that? Dick Weissman said it was between eight and nine, if I remember okay. right, for, for well, all of it. Exceed that. It won't exceed that. Yeah, yeah probably just wrote short of that. Well, if that's 25% uh, they're not going to do, you can figure it Well, it's not 25%. Whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. It's not going to be eight, nine thousand. It's going to be right. Whatever the cost is, we're paying from materials. Yes, all that's right. right. Mr. Alden. Uh, Devon, I haven't seen the that, but on, on the, the Market Street side, how is that, because that, that's got some approaches off of the street, how are you going to uh, do that? Is, is the grass area going to be put back in through there and then have a sidewalk and a curb and, Tim and I kind of follow the same? It's actually going to have a little snake in it because the curb that's on the corner right now of Market, and there's probably about... 10 or 15 feet of that curb will leave along yeah. the sidewalk, but we're not going to get into the corner because right. it's all good. Okay. But from that point, there'll be a saw cut. But that curb does not line up with the curb down by the drive up. They're offset by a few feet, so there's going to be a snake in that curb for them mm. to line up. And Dick was okay with that this morning when we were discussing with him. <coughs> and then the sidewalk will be there, and there'll be a little grassy boulevard in there. I, I know it's a little different than the rest of it. So, Doc, we don't need any motion or anything. We're just going to leave it the way it was passed. All right. I think so. I, I haven't seen a motion again. But I think walking away, everyone understands, I think, don't we? What's the yeah, I understand. Okay. 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 Right. Right. Now you're talking about a snake in there. Uh, can the snake be down there by the uh, the approach to the drive through Is the approach set back into the property further than the city curb, or is it the opposite? The corner of Webster Street is farther north than the curb down the drive up. We're going to. I mean, that that snake you're calling it, can it be done down there by the approach so it doesn't look. Or not really, down, or does that have to be on the corner? I think it's actually going to look better if it's down by the corner. Okay. Probably, probably would help the drainage out mm -hmm. too, what I looked at when I was down there earlier. The final question I've got is. is held up the bill from Pogonpo to see whether or not they send us the invoices or whether they send the invoices to Castle. Personally, I would like to see the invoices just come to us. We're yeah. paying that. They, yeah, and that's what, what I said. That, that's what I meant. He was holding it up. But we were holding it up for tonight. We weren't sure what was going to happen. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. but as of everything this morning, we'll let Pogonpo know in the morning, and then everything's coming at 6 a.m. tomorrow. All the tickets will go straight to the city. We got the business out of the way. It looks nice. It looks a lot nicer than anything else we've had on that corner in years. Uh -huh. Even the dirt and the raw concrete so far. City attorney updates. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. A number of things here. Uh, here. As of our agreement has been revised, it looks like to our liking, but there, I got an email today. We're going to schedule a meeting with Larry and, and the mayor to uh, follow up with that. Hopefully, we'll have something by the next council meeting. You've received from me a pretty detailed uh, memorandum as to the Leopardo uh, proposal. And I saw an email, but I think you folks, have, after reading that, you decided not to go forward with it. So, uh, all
also your city engineer. I've been uh, working with uh, Adam Pillai, the engineer for TDA. He's working on issuing the approval of a city permit for the construction plans and the floodplain for that industrial park, the TDA. So hopefully by next council, that's going to be up and we're done. We'll have a response with the city engineer, whether it's a go or not, uh, approval. Also, uh, I believe I'm coming to the meeting Thursday for the uh, proposed settlement with BNC Investments on your lift station. And we'll, we'll discuss that at length. I'll try to get something out to you. So uh, if you guys are okay with it, then we can put that on the agenda for the next council meeting. Uh, Mr. Dorchinez, I've, I've got back to him just a moment briefly before this meeting, but uh, on the memo <coughs> questions he had on your lake lot lease, I'm asking him to take that back to your committee and perhaps direct me to make some changes to what uh, we discussed. That, that we're talking about when folks come to you on the lake lot lease or have privately owned property adjacent to the lake, putting in structures where it is on your uh, lake and what happens and if they decide to lose the lake lot lease, who takes it out and so forth. So we'll get that to uh, Also, uh, Mr. Spiegel has uh, asked me to look into, do you have a utility agreement with Illinois Midland Railroad that was uh, the 20 year license agreement expires the end of this year. Uh, we're in the process of looking that over. You paid $5,250 for that license. Now they're asking for $10,000. So uh, that's going to be due by January 1 of 2020. It's concerning a uh, sewer line, sanitary uh, line, a storm sewer, sanitary line, or water line that crosses the tracks apparently. The one thing that caught my eye, the, the agreement 20 years ago was asking for a million dollar liability policy. Today they're asking for six million. So we need to probably talk about that, whether or not we want to go that high. I don't think you've got that kind of coverage, do you? Well, to, you're just going to check that out with uh, your insurance agency to see if we can even comply with that. And then finally, uh, RECC Electric uh, has contacted the mayor over the next few months. They would like to uh, renew the discussions about renewing their franchise. They've been given a copy of Amherst, and so we'll be following up with, with those types of discussions. So, is there any questions on any of those topics? Yes? Oh, no. Okay. No, no, no. okay. Well, you're going to take the ordinance about the police vehicles for me to yes. take a look at. I still have not got the magic language from Senator Minari yet, so if you'll follow up with him. That was the, he was going to send an email to us to how our spending requirements on that grant that's it. Okay. Mayoral update. Now that schools are back in session, please be extra careful in driving with the school zone. Please don't talk or text on your phones, Mr. Bad, while you out there watching the people. <laughs> Saw seven or eight the first day, and uh, our police will be monitoring the school zones. Uh, We've given out four or five applications so far for the BTD and reimbursement for the downtown area. We're starting to see some work being done in the downtown <coughs> area. That's a good thing. I want to thank the fire department and the police department for an excellent national night out. It was very well attended and a great opportunity for the community to see the local officials and also the firemen and the police. Thank you, Mr. Cruz and Chief Wheeler for that. We currently have seven applications on file for the street and sewer street superintendent. Alderman Olive and I will be going over the applications tomorrow and hopefully we'll have a name in the upcoming week. That's all I have tonight. So we'll go to committee reports. Discussions and or motions to approve, adopt and or deny and or table and or amend and or refer to an appropriate committee in whole or in part to matters regarding the following subject matters Discuss at the committee level. Water and environmental. All the verbal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Webb for chairing that committee because I was out of town. So thank you, Larry. Yeah. Uh, the first motion that came out of the committee was motion to authorize and direct the mayor to sign pay request number 25 from Plocker Construction in amount of $421,162.59 for the work on a new water treatment plant and for the request the IEPA low interest loan program for disbursements and approved payment of same pending receipt of disbursement from the IEPA. This condition upon the receipt of the signed mechanic lien waiver in this amount and recommendation from the project engineer that the work has been satisfactorily performed on the that form of motion. Motion law and verbal. Second law and all Roll call. Chris Colsetti. Yes. Megan Brad. 
Yes. Larry Bud, yes. Sean Bertles, yes. Tony Dorton, yes. Leland Valley, yes. Yes. Jim Oliver. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Next motion is recommend the city council to pay Benton and Associates fifty two thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars and eighty four cents for the work reform related to the construction of the new water treatment plant from June twenty third of two thousand nineteen through July twentieth of two thousand nineteen. I'll make that point. Motion of Alden Burgos, second, second of Alden Bryant, roll call. Megan Bryant, yes. Larry Budd, yes. Sean Bernal, yes. Bernie Dorchin, yes. Lee Van Fowdy, yes. Jim yes. Oliver, yes. Crystal Teddy, yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Next motion was recommended to the city council to pay Clark Dietz an amount of $2,320 for work reform related to the construction of the new water treatment plant from June 29th of 2019 through July 26th of 2019. I'll make that part Motion by the Bernal. Thank you. Second by Ms. Ryan. Roll call. Larry Bud. Yes. Sean Bernal. Yes. Danny Gorchanel. Yes. Leland Bode. Yes. Jim Ola. Yes. Chris Teddy. Yes. Megan Bryant. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Next motion to recommend to the city council to approve the approve property well and pump to repair and return the pump at a cost not to exceed ten thousand four hundred thirty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. Make that point. Motion by Alderman Burgle. Second. Second by Alderman Skull Teddy. Roll call. Sean Burdle. Yes. Ernie Dorchino. Yes. Lee Van Zoddy. Yes. Jim Mullen. Yes. Chris Skull Teddy. Yes. Megan Bryant. Yes. Larry Bud. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Last motion was to recommend to the city council to direct the city attorney to draft an ordinance authorizing the extension of the water main to Ridge Avenue. Make that motion. Motion by Alderman Burgle. Second. Second by Alderman Alden. Roll call. Ernie George. Yes. Leland Zoddy. Yes. Jim Ola. Yes. Chris Skull Teddy. Yes. Megan Bryant. Yes. Larry Bud. Yes. Sean Burgle. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Lakeland Airport. Alderman <coughs> George Chinez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Lincoln Airport Committee met, and the first motion to come out of the meeting was to recommend the City Council to allow Denison's Stephanie Street matter to add a porch under the trailer, a new ski lift, and put a tiny home on wheels with their uh, lot on Campground 2, Lot 8. Motion. 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 Motion of Alderman Dorchinez. Second. Second of Alderman Bud. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next motion, uh, I'm going to make a motion to table that because of the fact that uh, Lincoln Land has uh, lost their instructor and this may not come to fruition. So, uh, make a motion to table. Thank you. Most of all, the doors have the table. Second, all the skull tending. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The last motion is to recommend the City Council to approve Airport Superintendent Newberry just to distribute the stormwater pollution plan questionnaire to the airport tenants. Most of all, in motion has. Second, all of them bud. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance committee, all of Bryant. Ordinance, ordinance amending section 3-3-10 and section 3-3-5 of Taylorville City Code. Um, this is regarding the closing hours of class B and class F of liquor license holders. Make that in form of motion. Most of all, in Bryant. Second. Second by Alderman Olive. Questions or answers? Discussion? Roll call. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Olive? Yes. Chris Teddy? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Budd? Yes. Sean Bertel? Yes. Ernie Dorsey? Yes. Motion carries 7 to 0. The next motion is to recommend to the City Council to amend the Taylorville City Code to post a June 1st through June 30th available waiting list for the boat docks, lake docks, and campground sites. I'd like to put that form of motion. Yeah, I suggest that Ryan. it be amended according to the minutes it was to direct the city attorney to be aware of that, not the city council. Which would like probably to, be the appropriate thing. I'd like to change my motion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to recommend to the city attorney to amend <laughs> the city code. All right. Motion of Alderman Bryant, second by Alderman George Chinez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Finance Committee, Alderman Budd. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the first motion was to recommend the City Council to contribute $7,500 each year for the next three years to the Optimus Club for the 4th of July fireworks display with $7,500 coming from the hotel motel tax. Make that form of motion. Motion of Alderman Budd, second by Alderman Birdle. Roll call. Jim Olive? Yes. Chris Colteddy? Yes. Megan Bryant? No. Larry Budd? Yes. Sean Bertel? Yes. Ernie Dorsey? Yes. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. 
Motion carries six to one. Uh, the next motion was to recommend the city council to decrease the two monthly safety awards to fifty dollars each each and decrease the year end safety awards by one half that being one award of two fifty and two awards of one hundred. Make that form motion. Motion by Alderman Bud. Second. Second by Alderman Bryant. Discussion, questions, roll call. Chris Coltetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. Sean Riddle? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Motion carries seven to zero. <clears throat> Madam, the next motion was to recommend the city council to direct the city attorney to amend the travel, meal, and lodging expense reimbursement policy to pay for the full conference registration and the full hotel fee for the elected officials attending the IML conference. The elected official will must be attend the daily meetings. Mileage, parking, train, taxi, and the Uber will not be included. Make that form motion. Motion by Alderman Bud, second, second by Alderman Bryant. Roll call. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. Sean Bertel? Yes. Ernie Dorchinet? Yes. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Olive? Yes. Chris Coltetti? Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, the next motion was to recommend the City Council change the September Finance and Ordinance Committee meeting dates to Tuesday, <coughs> September 17th. Back at form motion. Motion by Alderman Second. Bryant. Second by Alderman Bryant. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And the last motion was to recommend the City Council to accept the treasurer's report as presented. Back at form motion. Motion by Alderman Bud. Second. Second. By Alderman Bryant. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The last motion. Okay, and then the last thing would be a motion to approve or ratify payment of bills of two hundred twenty-nine thousand five hundred eighty-seven oh two. Make that form of motion or comment. Motion by Alderman Bud, second by Alderman Bertle. Comment, Alderman Bud. Electric one ten thousand one hundred three twenty-seven. Fuel twenty-three thousand five hundred six fifty-eight. Garbage five thousand eight hundred forty-three oh five. Case Big R Bronze Urban two thousand five hundred seven eighty-three. Office supplies 1127.21. Napa, O'Reilly's, and AutoZone 1113.51. Computer Tech 8480.72. Larry Service Center 1964.91. Vanavet Engineering for Well Number 4, Lipsta and Lip Station 6905.37. Barrels Ag Management 5640. Blue Garage Repairs with 91 Kodiak. 4,721.25. Joe Kirby, tear down houses in the Carnival, 4,700. Meyer Austin Romano, 8,431.50. Illinois Department of Revenue, fuel tax, sales tax, 2008. Christian County Reporter, Lincoln and Annotations, 1,008. United Capital Funding for Temporary Help, 3,400. Training for police and fire, 2158.53. Uniforms, police and fire, 1259.46. Police and fire commission for advertising, 1134. Street department, all culture, 1694.64. Carol Graph Systems, prescription renewal, 3436.79. Lewis Marsh, 2652. Water department. Benton and Associates, 52,482.09. Clark Deeds, 2,320. Rock Well uh, Engineering for Wall 4, 2,187. Midwest Meter, 2,531.83. Private Tech for Hazard Analysis of the New Plant, 9,700. Robert Ricky Plumbing, 1,032. Rush Truck Centers for Transmission, 2,390. U line for supplies for new plant, 2,356 06. WW Green supplies and equipment, 1,551.23. Chemicals, 28,450.68. And Lake Department, Christian County FS, this is the propane can contract for there, 4,756.50. And these total, 213,595.28. Before we vote on that, I'd like to. Got a couple things on the bills. One is uh, page 10 to your bills. Uh, we uh, rented a tiller and also uh, two different times along with the break. Uh, there's a street department, and Dick's not here. The street department not have their own tiller. 
but I think we can we, we spent one hundred and thirty four dollars last month on renting a teller, and I would think with the amount of stunts that are already moving and putting dirt, we should probably purchase a tiller in the next. Oh, we might bring that up the next street committee. The other issue I have is on. Uh, Page two, the reimbursement for mileage of $156.60 to Alderman and Zabi. I'd like to know what that is for and, uh, you know, how, why would the city pay for somebody to go pick up a police uniform? I think we could, I mean, paid $156. I think we could mail it to someone and, uh, I just wanted to know exactly what that is for. That's under the police administration. So either Chief Wheeler or, or Vance or Alderman and Zadi, can you explain that expense, please? Yes, sir. That was, uh, he went, he drove to Danville to pick up a uniform. He, to get a size for uniform. And it would be delivered. He had a good size for the class A's for the police chaplain. So we're paying $156.60 for someone to get sized for a, for a uniform? I've never heard of such a thing. I get sized for a tux. I might order the tux from Chicago, but I go up here and get the size and, and send it in. Uh, I, I mean, it's up to the alderman, but I don't think that inversion. I did not know anything about it. We could use city vehicle and drive it. I think I could drive to Danville and uh, spend less than thirty-five dollars in gas. Uh, so, I—that's just my opinion. And uh, other than that, you know, I—I I have to agree with this. You know, um, it's an awful lot of money just to drive up there, and then plus we've got the cost for the the uniform, whatever that may be. Um, I have no clue what that cost will be. Uh, I, I think that when this was first brought out, this should have come out to all of us for what's going on. I mean, here now we're finding out we've got costs associated that was not even discussed at any of the meetings that I, that I recall. And I attend most meetings. I understand the cost of the uniforms coming out of the, some type of fund chief. Yes, they're fully allowed. They're clothing. Oh, I know. All right, that's all I okay. so, Roll call. Larry Beth? Yes. John Bertel? Yes. Freddie Dorchinen? Yes. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. High School Teddy? Yes. Megan Bray? Yes. Motion carries 7 to 0. First subparagraph G of 5 ILCS 120-2.06. This portion of the city council may be reserved for any person who wishes to address the council on any relevant subject matters concerning the city. The Illinois Open Clean Act 5 ILCS 120-1FC mandates no action shall be taken on subject matters not listed on the agenda, but the council may direct staff to address the topic or refer the subject matter to a future council and or committee meeting. If anyone wishes to address the council, please provide your name and address, limit your comments or presentation to three minutes, and avoid repetitious comments. Anyone out in the audience like to speak? Chief Curry? Yes, uh, my career is terrible, fire chief. I just want to be sure that all of the aldermen knew, and of course the mayor, that the uh, city sirens, with the exception of Dab uh, excuse me, Boyd Dapper, are now fully operational. Uh, also, if you could spread the word, if anyone asks, I know there were some questions that uh, they're for outdoor use only. Just reinforce that message. I wanted to share that uh, we're working with uh, Dr. Doherty um, to get up a new curriculum in the schools to really reinforce the, you know, the severe weather plan that we have. Um, but uh, we're working with uh, Shelby Electric, uh, American Signal, uh, Dick Wiseman, the assessor's office. We're probably going to have to move that pole uh, in Boyd Dapper across the street. Uh, we have to find the easement and then move it to that piece of property. It's the last piece of property in the city. But uh, uh, what had happened when the poles were set years ago, it's too close to those high transmission lines and they're picking up uh, some voltage. I think it's around 150 volts off that storm head. 
And so American Summer didn't want to touch it, so we wanted to bring it back and look at it. But uh, regardless, uh, with the weather coming tomorrow, I'll just tell you, the, the uh, forecast looks identical to December 1st. So they're looking at a uh, storm from the northwest side of Iowa moving southeast. And uh, around noon will be the impact time. So I'm sure everyone's aware of that. Uh, we, we put out on social media, uh, text, emails, a whole bit, uh, to let folks know uh, that siren is still out of service, but everything else is up and running. So that's it. We need to hear from Mr. Krenzer from the Planning Commission. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually the previous mayor always stopped the meeting and let me address. I, well, I, I, like that I feel like I'm special. We can stay the whole night. Uh, <laughs> maybe you learned something. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, maybe not. <laughs> Mr. Kretzer, you may address the Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission met this evening on two different two, two different areas. Uh, the first one being a site plan for Brad Tullis on 2800 Park Avenue and uh, it was unanimous with the Planning Commission to to allow that site plan with a waiver, a uh, temporary waiver for sidewalks uh, depending on whether the city decides to remove the place or abandon the sidewalks coming to that property. Mr. Tullis at that time if they do something with it then he'll put sidewalks on in front of his property and I can say that was unanimous. Second. I don't think we can vote on it it's not on our agenda, correct? Correct. correct. We we'll we'll vote on it at our September 7th. Uh, Tullis's? Yes. Yes. Yep. He went on the agenda? No. No oversight on the mayor's part. I apologize. Okay. So the other one <laughs> yeah. the other the other one that we met on was the uh, to amend uh, section 10-4-3 and section 10-4-6 of the city code in regards to adding retail sales of mobile homes and trailer parks as a special use in R2 zoning district. And that vote was also unanimous. So we will vote on that at the September 2nd meeting also. Thank you very okay. much and apologize. Okay. Thank you. So we're glad to have you here. Yeah. Anyone else like to speak about any matter? Yes, sir. State your name. Uh, my name is Taylor McManigal, and my address is 1013 Roosevelt Road. And I just wanted to come in, and I, I realized the ordinance that was voted on at the beginning of the meeting uh, concerning the uh, selling of marijuana within Taylorville, uh, the city of Taylorville. I understand that was part of your paperwork and all that, but uh, we just wanted to make sure that we voiced our opinion as far as we don't believe that that would be a, a necessary thing for Taylorville and for the future of our children um, to be able to sell marijuana within Taylorville District. And, uh, and if you have any questions about that, I'd love to share with you my experiences of being in people's homes where instead of a parent choosing whether they were um, you know, just going to pay for their water bill and their children's clothing, they have to choose between the two because they spent the money on the marijuana. And so I just, I, I just believe that it's uh, detrimental to our, our city, especially when it says it's Taylorville, a great place to live. Thank you. Thank you, and I, uh, we will we will address it in probably the ordinance meeting in October, because that will be after the municipal league, where we'll find out more about what we can and cannot do, and Thank I'll you. make sure you're invited personally. Thank you. And I'd always hear a congregation. I received quite a few phone calls today from them, and I appreciate it. They're a popular guy. Anyone that calls <laughs> I really do. Whether we agree, disagree, it's good to talk and find out what the people themselves are thinking. And I went on the radio this morning and, and gave out my phone number to people. And uh, I appreciate all the constituents, whatever concern you have, whatever you tell. I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to work through it. Yes, sir. I don't wish to. Uh, oh, I'm Barry Bird. I live down uh, Southwest or 618 Southwest. I don't wish to reiterate the same points, but reinforce those those things and, and maybe add a little bit. This is being sold as something that will benefit the lake. Um, a $40 million project, if I recall correct, correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, 
and I just don't know if you thought that in order to raise those kind of funds off of a 3% sales tax, we're talking about um, something in the neighborhood of one and a half billion dollars worth of wheat that would need to be sold within our, our uh, city limits and what type of impact that would have if it were to happen very quickly and also realize that would take decades to, um, in order to uh, raise those type of funds. So to sell that, and I've, I've seen this happen um, time and time again where we, we sell an idea on, on something that sounds really good but is really so far-fetched and, and it's the old bait and switch uh, uh, idea and the, the bait and switch topic, but, but also our kids. Um, you know, this is why I'm raising my three kids. Um, I'd like to continue to raise my three kids here, but I'd like it to continue to be a safe place and uh, have those um, hometown values that I'm used to. And, uh, you know, I've, I've worked in the school districts here for a lot of years. I've worked with kids um, for 20 years. And I've also have seen uh, the kids whose parents are in jail for drug use and they're in seventh grade and drop out or they stay home to take care of the younger brothers and sisters. And I've seen those, those things firsthand and, and uh, you know, I could go on and on about statistics and, and uh, reiterate some of those points, but uh, just reemphasize what, what uh, Brother McManigal said here, um, how this isn't something that we really need to be behind. And, and a little bit disheartening that we, I know it wasn't a, a vote to allow the um, dispensaries to uh, be open, but to impose the tax. But why vote to impose the tax if there's no intention of opening the dispensaries or allowing them within our city limits? And that's a kind of a rhetorical question. That. All this discussion about the dispensaries and things is all in tendency. So we really don't know exactly what direction they're going to to go. And you'll be allowed, or, or I will invite all of you to any of our meetings that we discuss this. Because I think it should be a community discussion on this and I welcome the community's input into it and and the, the thing about you know where where I don't know how many dispensaries there's going to be I've heard anywhere from 47 to 200 within the state I don't know if the license fee I think it's quite expensive so I don't even know if it will be an issue but the, the tax we passed today has to be an ordinance into the Department of Revenue in case we want to move forward so again don't, by this vote tonight, which was unanimous, uh, don't take anything whether we're going to allow it or not. I don't even know if it will be an issue yes. going forward. I do know if the city opts out of letting dispensaries in our town, they could sell it where you live on Roosevelt in Burtonetti, but that's not the city limits. They could sell it in Hewittville, they could sell it in Langleyville. We would have no say, so that would affect all our school children also. So that's what the city's gonna be looking for is, you know, how many dispensaries is the state gonna allow and where are they gonna be located? And, and so that will be discussed with all the aldermen. So like I said, you'll be invited to every meeting and my phone is always open and uh, I'll be glad to talk about any issues. Yes. All right, anyone else? Uh, Mr. Mayor, John Robinson, 810 Heights Avenue. It's refreshing to hear these young men's comments. Uh, we'll, we'll be uh, able to attend these meetings then, Mr. Yes. Mayor? Or will it be posted in the paper? Yes. yes. Okay. And that's which committee does this? It'll be the ordinance okay. committee where we'll probably discuss it. And okay. uh, if Julie would get these names down, uh, I will have Shirley send you guys all a letter. Thank you. After to remind you with the, the ordinance committee meeting is usually the third Thursday of every month. Now, this in September, we've moved it to the Tuesday because the Illinois Municipal League Conference in Chicago is that Thursday. So, but we won't, I don't think we'll discuss it. We could discuss it at the September 17th meeting if Alderman Bryant decides to. But I think what I would like to rate, wait for is let the Illinois Municipal League come out with some guidelines on what, how, things like that. And so I'd rather it be just. Yeah, it'll be on the October 21st. October, October 21st will be the next meeting. Or, I'm sorry, strike that. October, or, yeah, October 20, or October 17th. October 17th, which will be the third Thursday in October. Yeah. And we will discuss.
discuss it then. And, and what time is that meeting? It'll be at six, six o'clock, and I think she's first. She's first, then. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, it'll be first. We'll, we'll put it first on the agenda so you guys want to go home and watch the World Series. That night, I think that's opening night of the World Series. You'll be allowed to go home and watch the Cardinals play the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> In yes, the interim, sir. if you want to go on to IML.org, that's what the Online Municipal League's got a whole brochure about this whole topic. It might be of interest to you. Good. Thanks, Roger. And thank you for your time. But if I may, one more make one more comment. I appreciate what you uh, mentioned about not knowing the cost associated with new uniforms. And I think this is definitely one of those issues that not a single person in this room can calculate the cost. What this is going to cost to you know our kids, our kids' lives, our kids' families. Is it going to cost one of our kids' lives? Because mm -hmm. I sure hope it's not my kid. Yeah. You know, I, and I know. There's a few of you who I know your children personally, and, and I, I, would, I would hope and pray that it's not one of them, or for that matter, any of them that I don't know. But we can't count the cost on this one. It's, it, it's something that we only see in hindsight. Thank, Thank you. Motion for adjournment. Motion for all the Second on the skull Teddy. All in favor of the adjournment. Aye. Aye. All opposed? City Council is adjourned. Thank you very much. Yes.